In the world of boxing, the name Harry Greb is one held in especially high esteem, with Greb being considered one of the finest pound-for-pound -pound boxers to have ever lived. A feat that is doubly impressive when you consider that Greb was able to best almost a hundred fridge-sized men in the ring with only one functional eye. So, who is this Harry Greb? Well, just the name Greb. Mr. Greb. Mr. Greb. It's a, it's a great name, we'll put it out there, and I'm not going to make fun of it because I'm, he might be a ghost. I'm not fucking with that ghost. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing, isn't it? When you're, like, when you're a boxer, you can have whatever name you want. I never understood why boxers try and give themselves scary sounding names. It's way scarier to me if they have like really unassuming, silly sounding names and then kick the shit out of you. It's just like mundane names like John Smith. <laughs> I've got beaten up by John Smith. What? <laughs> well, then you have names that are just now synonymous with whooping ass like Mike Tyson. I don't want to mess with him. <laughs> I want to mess with I want to mess with any boxer. Because the genre of video that goes around every now and again is something like, oh, these muggers or these drunk guys try to pick a fight with, like, you know, an amateur professional boxer, and they just absolutely pick them apart. Why? Why would you do that? <laughs> Unless they're a heavyweight, most boxers have pretty unassuming builds. Like, they're clearly in shape, but they're not, like, jacked to all balls. Like, you look at someone like Floyd Mayweather. Mm. Like, he looks pretty unassuming just in, like, you know, his regular outfit, but I don't want to fucking mess with him. Bringing it back to Harry Greb though, he's widely considered one of the finest pound for pound fighters who have ever lived. And he took part in, I've got the number here, 299 fights, winning 261 of them. And he was known as a ferocious, tenacious fighter with footwork fancier than a ballerina carrying a McDonald's order down a flight of stairs backwards. <laughs> a line I'm going to use because I wrote it and I thought it was pretty good. I was like, where's this going? <laughs> but yeah, so a lot of fights then that you yeah. won. He won a lot of fights, and um, he was noted for, as mentioned, his tenacity, his ferocity, and his use of, shall we say, unconventional underhanded tactics. So what do you mean by that? Well, Greb was known to use anything and everything he legally could in the ring to gain an advantage, which led to him doing things like flicking at his opponent's eyes with the laces of his gloves, stepping on their toes, and in some cases, just getting into the clinch and slapping the nut on them. <laughs> Which is a, a turn of phrase I want to clarify for Americans because I use it a lot. Mm -hmm. And it means headbutting somebody. I just prefer the term slapping the nut on someone because it sounds very funny. And for anyone at home who's curious, uh, none of this was technically against the rules at the time Greb fought. It was in fact an expected part of boxing. Um, so him using these tactics um, wasn't really that uncouth because other people would use them against him, which is how he ended up losing his right eye. Yeah, with stuff like that though, like stepping on toes and flicking eyes with laces, you could claim it as an accident, like, whoops, my bad, I stepped on his toe. And that is something that happens a lot in professional sports, like um, football is an example that springs to mind for me. Um, soccer for the Americans, where, oh yeah, we're winning like 2-0, and it's like 85 minutes. I'm going to really slowly walk over to the court to get the ball for the throw, and I'm going to spend like a good 10 seconds deciding where I throw it to. It's like... <laughs> and it's one of those things where it's not against the rules of the game, but it is against the spirit of the game. Mm. And it's up to an individual or a team, I guess, um, how much they're going to you know, put the thumb on the scale in their favour. And I'd argue in organised competition with money and prestige on the line, anything you can do within the rules to get the win, get the win. Yeah, you would, wouldn't you? Especially in the world of boxing, where you know it's your life on the line in some cases. And as mentioned, people fighting Greb were doing the exact same thing to him. Yeah. And it's that thing, if they're going to use that tactic on me, I'm going to use it on them. Which makes me think of the MMA fighter, Hoyce Gracie, who would just, he wouldn't like attack his opponent, he'd just like grab them and like just basically pin them on the floor and then they'd tie themselves out trying to release themselves from his, from his grip. Boring to watch, but yeah. fuck you. It's like Floyd Mayweather mentioned him, constantly going for the clinch and only trying to win on points with his jab. It's not interesting to watch, admittedly, but like he gives a fuck about that, he's there to win. He's not there to entertain you, he's there to win. You do what you can. You do what you can, yeah. A win's a win, as um, uh, Vin Diesel would say in the Fast and Furious franchise. So how did he lose his eye? Now, well, it was during a bout with a guy known as Kid Norfolk, and during that fight, Kid Norfolk jammed his thumb directly into Greb's right eye. Oof. <laughs> yeah, and it effectively just destroyed the eye, or at least its utility and use. And uh, for anyone wondering, Man, that must have sucked. It did, and it really hurt, but Greb still won that fight. <laughs> With an eye that had just been nearly gouged out. Oh, God. Oof. I just hate the image of it. Well, there's a reason why eye gougers are one of the things that's near universally banned in all organised combat sports. I think it's like, what, attacks to the groin, eye gougers, and fish hooks. People don't know, finger in the mouth, grab in the mouth. Because again, your mouth is, your face can be quite strong, but it's very easy to rip somebody's cheek. 
Yes. Ooh. Uh. Yeah. And while, yes, I do get why that's the case, because it's just fucking unfair. Like, no man is going to be able to stand there and take, like, you know, an unguarded shot to the balls. I do wish just once they'd do a boxing match or have a boxing league where it's allowed just to see how the sweet science would evolve. Because I bet, like, just boxing would evolve to nothing but ball shots by the end of it. <laughs> It'd just be the case of who can get there first. Yeah. Who can, like, hit them first. Not, uh, not like, how long are they going to last because whoever gets hit is just going to go down. <laughs> That's the one. It lasts like 10 seconds. That's the thing I, you know, I have been kicked in the balls once or twice in my life. And you just go straight down. Like, there's nothing you can do. Like, it's just immediate incapacitation. That's what I want to see. I want to see boxing. Just, just the... Who can get, who can leave a person in the nuts fastest? <laughs> the ball punching league. The logo. It's just two boxing gloves like little ball. Oh my God. Oh, it'd be the quickest league ever. Because... Yeah. It... Here he is with Fernandez, the new champion, with 15 knockouts in 30 seconds. <laughs> anyway, so uh, bring it back to Harry Greb. Um, as mentioned, like Kid Norfolk just jammed his thumb right into his right eye, um, destroying the sight in it. And amazingly, Greb was able to win that fight, winning on decision a few rounds later. But even more impressive than that, Greb won another fight six days later when his eye hadn't fully healed yet. God. And the fact that Greb had no sight in his right eye was a closely guarded secret Greb revealed only to his closest friends um, until his untimely death five years later. And during that time, he took part in another 89 bouts. And how many did he win of those? 82. It's really good. Oh, yeah. That's a really good ratio. So he beat 82 fridge-sized men in a fight with one eye. And keep in mind, folks, now, without two eyes, your depth perception is thrown off, which means that when people are doing things like this directly towards your face. That's really hard to gauge. I hope he had like good eyesight as well in that eye because like having bad eyesight would just be Well, just that's be the awful. thing because um, uh, a few years after that, he started losing the sight in his other eye. No. Yeah, so he was legally blind in one eye and only had half eyesight in the other eye. And the weirdest thing about this is like boxing experts are convinced that this actually made him a better boxer. Really? Yes, because Harry Greb was like, he had phenomenal strength and endurance. And they say that because he had such poor eyesight, uh, due to the fact that one of his eyes didn't work and his other one was on its way out, um, he fought in such an unconventional, unpredictable manner. Because he would just swing at anything that came into his peripheral. That's all he could basically see. And so the opponent would not be expecting his moves. Yes, essentially. It's like it's a quote from Harry Greb at the end of his life is that I can barely tell who stood in front of me. Like, I can't tell who someone is when they're stood directly in front of me, which makes him sound like such a fucking badass. He was effectively fighting ghosts. <laughs> like, from his point of view, he's fighting just shapes that appear in his peripheral, and he just swings at them. Wow. And his opponents didn't know how to handle it because he was just so unpredictable. They didn't know what he was going to do because, like, you know, he didn't lock his guard and he was supposed to because he had no idea if something was going to hit him or not because he couldn't see it coming from his right side and he could barely see it coming from his left side. Oh my God. So what he did instead, he just fucking swing on everything. <laughs> And for people out there currently wondering, did anyone ever leak that Greb had no sight in his right eye? Uh, the answer is, it doesn't matter, because even if Greb's opponents knew that he had no sight in his right eye, chances are they wouldn't have believed it. One, because he was a really good fighter, and two, because Greb was exceptionally smart at, like, you know, psyching out opponents. For example, Greb was a well-known womanizer and drinker, uh, which wasn't true. Uh, they are just stories that were repeated by the press that Greb was all too happy to um, you know, let circulate in papers because it made people constantly underestimate him. Hmm. And he would lean into the rumors that he was a womanizer and a drinker when in fact, all he really did was train. All he ever did was train and punch people. But the papers like to report, oh, he's a big womanizer, he's always in the clubs. So chances are that even if Greb's opponents caught wind of the fact that he only had sight in one eye, they wouldn't have believed it because like, he was so well known for tricking people into underestimating him. So by, that, that by the end of his career, people didn't trust a single word he said because like how can he be that good if he's constantly drinking and going out and fucking women he must be training in secret i don't believe anything he says 